shown across the top. Yep. Is it a particular reason for it? No, and yes. Depends what you're trying to do. If he shows a with and without. With it, I will touch these. The scalar wave is bearable. Like it doesn't really feel nothing. Without it, the scalar wave will arc like that far off my fingers. And so I don't really like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. What is the voltage? Yeah, but this is science. You know, you've got to make some sacrifices. Well, go ahead. You, you do it. <laughs> you do it. <laughs> What's the voltage that is, is used to achieve that? That's a 10,000 volt transformer. I tried the 5,000 volt. It doesn't work as good. It works, but it takes it takes uh, harder to jump the gap. I have a 15,000 volt in the car. I haven't tried it yet. Just got it. But 10,000 volts isn't supposed to jump that far. It does. Yeah, of course it does. It's a like, furnace igniter. It goes right across the nozzle in the furnace, the diesel furnace, about half, about three eighths of an inch. I give up. Yeah, when I when I start the scalar wave is the node of the scalar wave is here, so you can look at the anti node and the positive node. So it, it forms between the two, or along the way this way. It's kind of hard to explain, but I mean, you're saying it's taking something in the water. No, when I start up here and I come to this, it's, it's weak up here and much more powerful down here. The differential on the scalar wave. Are you talking about when you put a short across the light bulb? Yeah. Oh, light. I put a short across the light bulb. Yeah. Well, it dims slightly when I put the LED clips right across the light bulb because some of the scalar wave went through the. Um, the short, and some of them went through the light bulb. But it neither, the, the short didn't get hot. Right. Now, if I was a 110 volt light bulb, even a 12 volt light bulb running, and then you put an elevator clip across it, the, the elevator clip would melt. I'm just wondering if you could do it the opposite way and see a different effect. What do you mean, opposite way? Well, it, you know, there is one direction that the current, or not current, but the um, potential is going. And I've, I've noticed by putting LEDs and other things in with a similar technology in, in certain. Their internal resistance, you get the opposite effect. So if you have one and it dims it, you put the other way, it'll light both up equally. No, I haven't so noticed that in this, no. Okay, so I, that's yeah. why I just said what you were looking at. Okay. Okay, well, I showed you what happens with the um, paper, or with the um, paper lighting. What I meant to do is to show you guys. What happens when I um, run it through that big loud spark? We did this out in the room there. It doesn't catch on fire unless you hold the steel and try to get it on fire. But what it does do is knock billions of little teeny holes in the paper, and you can see right through it. It's like, it's like tissue paper now. So you can come up with that later on. So it does change. I won't do it now since we've already done it and just get on with, on with our demonstration here to be all night. Um, so that, really, that basically shows all we can do here with this machine here. I, oh, I didn't light a regular household light bulb up with that. Let's do that, because that's kind of interesting. It seems to remove the coating for starters, arc internally, and implode. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole box of it. Uh, I've got a clear one. Uh, you can see it arc internally. It's, it might be hard to see from back there. We can do it afterwards. Um, the reason I went to these halogen 110 volt light bulbs is because they actually work and last. Um, the reason is that the two parallel wires going to the filament, the, the scalar wave will actually ionize all the gas between it and start arcing, and the whole bulb glows like a, like a neon bulb, <laughs> and you don't light the filament. And so to force the energy through, I take a, um, a regular bulb right out of the shelf. These are the construction lamps. For the, and oh yeah, the other thing I was going to say is, this is a 100 watt. I have a 500 watt one here. And the higher the, the wattage in normal electricity, the lower the, lower the resistance. So it's like maybe it's like two ohms, you know. Whereas this will be like ten ohms for the for the brighter bulb. Lower for the uh, you know for the hundred watt hundred watt versus the five hundred watt. I've got a twenty five watt one here, and uh, well, it used to be twenty five watt bulb, burned up now. It's backwards, and the brighter the bulb for this energy the higher the resistance. The bigger the node, the more energy flows into the bulb. And that's why I have to watch these little bulbs here. Um, no, we know we're taking a lot of time. I don't know when the next is going to happen. So I won't get into everything we can do with it. Um, and of course, we lit the fluorescent tubes up. So we kind of covered all that, what this machine can do here. If there's any other questions regarding this, I'll move on to the coil next. So how similar is uh, scalar waves to radio frequency energy? They're, they're not similar at all. They're not similar. No. They're, they're not. They're different. They're different. They're zero vector waves. They, 
So they they don't have a it pulls in the time domain, not in the electrical domain. They have zero potential. They're a zero vector wave. I, and I have we talked about Bearden's and explain it much better than I can. So they're not a standard standing wave no. ratio like no. uh, for a radio wave. No. no. <laughs> Oh yeah. So that concludes the uh, hair pin, test of hairpin. Pardon? Didn't we do it already here? The household. Oh, household. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Light the ball. Light the ball. Uh -huh. Evolve. 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 Shunt up here is fine. Uh, if we take the shunt off, this now does not present a difference in potential anywhere on it. It's a maximum wave that this thing can produce. Um, and the, it, the bulb, you saw the back, the bright the bulb was, it's as bright as it can possibly be. That's the only difference, you know. We can do it up here, it's the same thing. This just does not matter uh, as per this thing goes. Right? How is it that you didn't like to touch it? You mentioned well, I remember when it was running, you have to have a load on it, otherwise it makes a different sparks. You have to put a load across for starters. And that scares me. If I don't have a load on it, then it, it's conventional energy. And so that's the first step. You know? Second step is, is that with, if a regular light bulb's across it, it produces a much greater wave. And you start to, as your fingers approach it, it starts to draw arcs a little bit long. And so it, you can be grabbed as okay, but it, it, it's a getting a hold of it that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> 